Out of the many trends I've started when it comes to drag race related content creators, the whole what if X season was judged fairly content has been maybe the most misunderstood. When I did my first and well only video of that nature, I based it on the favoritism that Gigi Good, Crystal Method, Jackie Cox and Cherry Pie received during that season, so it was manageable and from the response I think people in general felt that my solutions were fair and reasonable. And this is only because the unfair treatment that lasted throughout most of the season encapsulated these four queens. And as a result of that, Widow Von Du, Britta, Heidi and Closet and Jada Legend Hall to an extent did didn't get the recognition that they deserved, so globally in the season I knew whom to focus on when it came to rewriting it. But then, for example, for Drag Race Down Under, that season is faulty in every single aspect of it, so much so that pointing out only specific details that need fixing wouldn't be possible. It's like taking a desk and trying to make a car out of it. Same goes for season 13. If you've seen my videos discussing just how nonsensical most of it was, you know that the division into the winning and the losing circle immediately put some queens at an unfair advantage that lasted all the way until the end. I did try to rewrite the season with the same challenges in mind, but there were too many roadblocks and too many decisions that would be hard to logically explain to actually end up making that video. So I propose this. Season 13, but I produce it, with, of course, what we know about the season. Let's begin. This season has all 13 queens, but it has only 12 episodes. One of these episodes is a reunion, and the other is... Uh, well, we'll get to it. We drop the lip syncing thing in the beginning. We drop the division thing. Basically, we drop the first three episodes almost entirely. However, we still do need a twist for that first episode, and we're going to have it, as will the queens. We begin the episode with all 13 of them coming into the workroom. Let's say in the order that they came in. So starting with Candy and Joey and ending with Kamora. Elliot and Tina. That takes up the first 15 to almost 20 minutes of the episode, a little longer than usual. All of the girls are in and they start talking about how they've been in the workroom for a while and they still haven't started actually competing, nobody's talked to them, and they get a message from Rue, who just tells them to meet him and the judges on the runway. Now this is where the intro of the show plays. We cut to all 13 girls now on the runway with Rue, Michelle, Carson and Ross at the judges panel and Rue greets the girls. He then proceeds by saying, prior to your entrances, you are asked to present two looks to us on the runway, a daytime lady look and a nighttime vamp look. Let's see how you did. This is where we see the looks that the queens in the original episodes 2 and 3 wore. The queens knew that this would be filmed prior to their entrances, by the way. And after this runway presentation, Rue goes, when I call your name, please step forward. Tina Burner, Denali, Tamisha Iman, Gottmik, Simone, Joey J, Candy Muse. You represent the tops and the bottoms of the week. The rest of you did not leave an impression on the judges. That's all. The safe queens go back into the workroom, which is now just untucked, but you know, and the deliberations begin. I'll go over the rest of the queens in the alphabetical order just so that there isn't any confusion. Denali is told that her looks on the runway were really good and that they tied together to who she was, as her entrance look clearly tells us what her greatest skill is. And while the looks may be similar in silhouette to an extent, they're all still three very different looks. Oh, and by the way, Denali is allowed to wear protection on her skates here. Gottmik is also praised for her runway presentation, but also with how she was clearly able to deviate from her go-to style on her pre-entrance runway, and her go-to style is what they see now in front of them on the runway. Unlike other queens, as Michelle would say. And then we cut to a shot of Tina Burner. Joey J gets somewhat criticized for the simplicity in all of her looks, even saying that there is too much of a disconnect between her runway looks and her entrance look. It doesn't seem like it comes from the same queen. They like that she switched up her hair, but then they get confused when Joey J tells them that she's a queen that never wears wigs. They get to Candy and all of the judges are like, 
oh my god candy your personality is great you're so fun your entrance look is really nice but and then they go on to roast her on my presentations saying that there clearly is a disconnect between this look and those looks and that every single moment on drag race counts simone is next and she's praised for being able to merge something classic with something modern but have all of that be relating to black culture of the us and on top of that to do it all while being so young then she's praised for her reference to the peak of modeling with her entrance look and of course they gotta praise her legs and just how gorgeous her skin is tamisha is praised for also bringing somewhat of a classic take on drag into the competition and she gets praised from the judges when it comes to her recovery and the fact that she's competing but they feel like they can't see much variety in her presentation they just want more from her and lastly Tina Burner is criticized for being too repetitive with the whole red, orange, yellow motif. And even if she wanted to just showcase those three colors as her colors, she could have done one color per look. And after further deliberations, Rue declares Simone as the winner and tells Gottmik and Denali that they are safe. Tamisha is told that they need just a tad bit more from her, but that she's safe also. Joey is put into the bottom two first and is quickly later than joined by Candy Muse. See, the first lip sync of the season stays the same and it also has the same result. The second episode is going to be the group acting challenge with a parody of holidays or whatever. I genuinely don't know what that was. Rue tells the girls that they will be divided into two groups of six, where the first group would be the group of the safe queens from the previous episode, and the second group is the group of the queens that were high or low. Without much logistics, assuming that the acting would be the same or at least similar to how it went originally, and knowing that the runway theme is trains, here are the results. As it is the first group challenge, and as yes, I am still reminding you of this established trope on the show, there will be a winning group and a losing group. And based on the original placements, the winning team would be the non-save girls, with Simone yet again as the winner. That means that her teammates, Denali, Gottmik, Candy, Tamisha and Tina are all high. When it comes to the losing group, the deliberations go as follows. Rosé is praised for her performance and they tell her that it's a shame that she was in the weaker group, but that, alas, she shone through. Elliot is also given praise for her performance and for her look. Lala, much like originally, seems to have faded into the background and that her talent did not really shine through. Olivia, much like Elliot and Rosé, is praised and they also like the departure in style for her runway look. Kamora, much like originally, gets really bad critiques, with the judges telling her that looks aren't everything. Lastly, Yurika is praised for her knowledge of classic references, but, and this is important, this is where they tell her that she doesn't have to be ooh quirky all the time. There is a time and a place for everything. This leads us into a bottom two lip sync between Lala and Kamora, where Kamora goes home. The third episode is the Discommentary episode. Here we have the same mini challenge with the same winners and with the same division of the rest of the queens. The runway team is little black dress still. Now, with how the performances went originally, the first five queens called are the high queens. Olivia as the winner, then Denali, Elliot, Rosé, and Tina. In the deliberations, Gottmik gets complete shit for her performance in the Maxi Challenge, while Michelle praises her for showing her body as a trans man, but says, and here she brings back her good old, stop relying on that body. Candy gets mixed to negative critiques on her performance and more or less the same critiques on her runway look. Lala gets praised on her performance, being told that it was perfectly fine, but that her runway, while being stunning, is a little basic. Simone is told that she didn't do as well as Lala in the maxi challenge, but that her take on the little black dress is definitely saving her. Tamisha is told that she didn't do as well as Elliot, but because she had the second hardest team choreography and a classy look on the runway, they can't really fault her too much. Tamisha maybe here has a moment where she cries or something and tells everyone that she has an ostomy bag on her at all times, so her good performance is given that little extra praise from everyone. Lastly, Yurika is told by the judges that, again, there is a time and a place for everything, and she did not listen to their critiques from the week before. Pair that up with her not-so-stellar performance and a runway look that the judges did not love, well, she's in danger. Our bottom three here are Gottmik, Candy, and Yurika. 
Candy is told that she's safe, which leaves Gottmik and Yurika in the bottom. With, of course, Yurika sweeping the floor with Gottmik. Gottmik, after getting eliminated, thanks everyone for being inclusive for even more types of drag, and that she's expecting that call for all stars. To balance out last episode's performing challenge and to up the ante on the whole acting comedy challenge, now we're doing the bossy Rossi challenge. Let's say that the teams are yet again the same, with the only difference being Tamisha taking Gottmik's original role in the skit with Olivia and Yurika, doing a pretty good job as Olivia's interpreter. The mini challenge here will be the one that was originally in the Snatch Game episode. So, Tina wins it here. On the runway, of course, the girls have to wear beads. So, just like the last episode, first we tell who the best queens are, and to nobody's surprise, the duo of Candy and Simone is up there, but then, to gag the queens a bit, Olivia is called as the winner, with Tamisha being high alongside her. What's important here is that in the Untucked, Candy and Tamisha have a fight, but this time it's about something else. Candy is frustrated that for these first four episodes, only two queens have been getting wins, and Tamisha tells her that they won because they were the best. If she wants to win, she needs to be the best, and so on and so on. Back on the main stage, Denali and Rosé don't get any really negative critiques on their performances, unlike Elliot and Lala. Tina is told that she's the funny one of her group, and lastly, the judges like that Yurika finally listen to their critiques, but that she doesn't seem to be comfortable when it comes to portraying everything but a quirky character. This leads into a bottom two lip sync between Elliot and Lala, where Lala goes home. So, different type of a challenge, up the ante, it's time for social media, the unauthorized rusical. We're coming off that Tamisha Candy fight in this episode, and possibly it's something that continues here and there throughout the episode. Maybe some other queens side with Candy, saying that, yeah, they want to win something too. Now, I would assume that the roles would have been the same in the challenge, because the only struggle when it came to the roles was between Denali and Rosé, so I guess Tamisha would be one of the Russian bots with Denali? I, you know what, hilarity ensues, or so we may think. On the runway, the girls, like originally, have to wear yellow. Let's get right into the placements. First, Elliot, Olivia, and Yurika are called safe. Denali gets praise on her performance, and on her outside of the box take on the runway, the judges really seem to be seeing all of the work that she's putting into this season. Candy, they do not like. Her look is, yes, referential, but it's also kinda basic, while her performance was bleh at best. Rosé gets high praise for her performance here, and Michelle maybe mentions that her runway is leaning more towards orange than yellow. They like Simone's look, even though they find it not on the same level as her other runway looks. That's really the only thing they like, as her performance in the Rusical was kinda shit. The writing is on the wall though, when they get to Tamisha and tell her that she did not fully embody that role that she got, and that she was upstaged by Denali. By a lot. Lastly, Tina gets praised for carrying the show and for finally wearing something that doesn't have all three, red, orange, and yellow on her. Yes, she stopped lip syncing for a second at the end of the challenge, so that will cost her the win, but that's not low placement worthy. And speaking of the win, they give the win to Rosé, who is one of the queens who at the beginning of the episode kinda sided with Candy, saying that she also wants to win something, you know, foreshadowing and everything, while Tina and Denali are safe. We get that lip sync between Candy and Tamisha here, with the same result as originally. Episode 6 is the Snatch Game episode. The mini challenge I chose for this episode is the reading challenge. Originally, Gottmik won both the reading challenge and snatch game, which were in different episodes, so we gotta implement some changes here. First, for the mini challenge, Rosé was shown as getting the most laughs after Gottmik, the winner, so we're going to count Rosé as the winner now. And when it comes to the results from the snatch game and the fascinated runway, first, Candy and Tina are the safe queens. Originally, Simone was safe with them as well, but we have to bump somebody from the safe queens to be part of the high group, and Simone is, I would say, the best choice. Now, who gets the win between Denali and Rosé? I must give it to Denali. Sure, she has said it herself that her runway look was not the most incredible thing ever, but hey, in the Snatch game, Rosé portrayed a person we know nothing about, how she was, and relied on the whole European accents make rule laugh thing, so in my eyes, Denali overall did it better. The rest of the placements, as you can see, are the same. Now, 
it was kind of hard to figure out what to do with the seventh episode. There are, well, seven queens left, so a makeover is a no-no. The ball I'm keeping for the top five episode because 30 something looks per episode means that we'll forget most looks and even the ones that stand out will be drowned out by just the sheer amount of the things that we see in the episode. So I'm putting the roast episode here. Between that and the soda challenge, the roast episode, not only this one, but pretty much every single one with this challenge, are the best episodes of a season. Because they rely solely on the talents of and the banter from the queens. Yes, it's another comedy challenge right after Snatch Game, and trust me, I would much rather have a design challenge here, but since the top 6 and the top 5 episode will be design based, I think it's okay that I also repeated a comedy challenge now. So first, just like originally, Candy and Rosé win the mini challenge for that episode. Now we know how 5 of these 7 queens would do in the roast, but what about Tina and Denali? Well, Bob the Drag Queen mentioned in one of the sibling watcheries, or maybe purse first impressions, that Tina Burner is deceptively bad at roasts. So I'm going to go off of that. Denali we've seen being funny many a time during the season, she did well in the reading challenge as well, so I don't think that she'd have much trouble in the challenge. In fact, I put her as high alongside Rosé, with Candy winning, like originally. With Tina being here, I gotta bump Simone up to the safe placement. Yeah, personally, I found Olivia and Utica funnier than her in the challenge, but the judges did not. Olivia at least had some good jokes in her repertoire, as did Utica. But Utica bombed more than Olivia, so Olivia is low for me and Tina is in the bottom two with Utica. Utica cements her status as the lip sync assassin of the season here by beating Tina. Episode 8 starts with Utica being so visibly frustrated. She has barely ever been given positive critiques by the judges and finds it such a shame that there have not been challenges that she can excel at. Denali will tell her that she isn't really known for doing comedy, but she still tried her hardest during those challenges that weren't up her alley and did well, so Yurika should just stop complaining. The 8th episode is the makeover episode. Instead of the girls making over each other, they will be making over the eliminated queens, without Tina of course, as she has just been eliminated, so Joey, Kamora, Got Miklala, Tamisha and Elliot are all back for this episode. The mini challenge is won by Candy, so as her reward, she gets to pair up the girls. Candy first gets to choose for herself. Lala is the only queen that's kind of candy size, so the queens think she might choose her, but Candy goes and picks Gottmik, explaining in her confessional that Gottmik is a great makeup artist and her style is impeccable, not yet knowing that the eliminated queens won't be doing any actual work. She then goes on to pair up the girls like this. Denali gets Kamora, cause Chicago sisters, Simone gets Tamisha because they're both slender queens that exude black USA culture in their drag, she gives Joey to Rosé because they're of similar statures, and in order not to have a Eureka-esque situation with the makeover challenge, she gives Lala to Olivia and Elliot to Utica. Kamora has a pretty hard time emulating Denali's essence in drag, and it's clear that Denali's heavily upstaging her. Candy with Gottmik is doing fine, but because Candy was the one who did all the work, the end result is not as fantastic as it was originally. Olivia is able to bring out the sort of smiley, bubbly thing in Lala, but here it seems that Lala's presentation is a little more genuine. Rosé kinda flops, flat out, and Joey and she look... fine? Wearing things that in no way, shape or form we've seen Rosé wear during the season. Simone brings her staple black excellence and with Tamisha is able to showcase different generational styles that still go well together, and Lastly, Yurika finally gets praise from the judges, as she was not only able to rise to the occasion, but also bring out a little less serious side to Elliot, while still giving fashion and Yurika. The results are as follows. Simone scores her third win in the season, and Yurika finally gets a high placement. Candy is just safe, while we get a bottom two lip sync between Denali and Rosé. Denali kinda goes into this lip sync defeated, knowing that it wasn't exactly her fault that she's in the bottom two. And on top of that, she has to lip sync against Rosé. This is why Denali gets eliminated here, sadly. Yeah, we have to build Rosé up as a good lip syncer. You'll see why. In the ninth episode, so the top 5 episode, we finally get the ball. Obviously, the bag ball. Candy wins the episode's mini challenge, as she did originally, and the challenge is the same. 
the runways are the same. Let's get into the results immediately. Utica gets her well-deserved win here with Rosé being high and Olivia being safe. We finally get that bottom two lips in between Candy and Simone, but this time there is no bullshit result. Simone simply stays over Candy. The 10th episode is an episode dedicated to Chi Chi Devane, who passed away on the 20th of August of 2020, while I believe the season was still filming, or it had just finished filming. The original season, of course. With this season being shorter than the original, we do encounter a timeline problem, but fear not, I have an obvious solution. This episode is simply recorded at a later date, and it showcases different queens from Drag Race, and maybe even some of Chi Chi's colleagues that haven't been on the show, talking about Chi Chi. Let's say that we also get a runway from the top 4 paying tribute to their favorite looks of Chi Chi's. Yes, with this we do break the tradition of having a song as the last challenge, but to be perfectly honest, I wish that challenge was only kept for All-Stars, because it feels more important on there, and with Drag Race pumping out a new season every, what, two months now, all of the finale songs kinda get blurred together for me, and this is my season, so yeah, none of that. <laughs> Of course, the 11th episode is the reunion, but the 12th episode is our top 4 lip sync for the crown finale. Sure, let's keep it. Our first lip sync pair is Olivia and Simone, where in my books, Simone beats Olivia. The second lip sync is between Rosé and Utica, and it seems as though it's an obvious thing that Utica is going to win this. She hasn't lost a single lip sync in the season, but Rosé does end up beating her, leading us into the top 2 lip sync between Simone and Rosé. However, before I say who I think wins, let's look at the table of track records of this season. Yeah, you can see that I do believe Simone would also win this season. As I've mentioned in my The Mistreatment of the Loser Circle, Rosé took a reality competition TV show as a competition only, whereas somebody like Simone gave you all three of these things. Furthermore, in my mind, Gottmik, Denali and Rosé come back for All-Star 7 and juke it out on Dare, but that season wouldn't come until at least like 2023. Yes, at the end Rosé does have a one point lead on Simone, before the finale that is, but I want the season to end with their scores tying, so that once we take away the mini challenge wins, Simone has the best track record. But who do you think would win? Rosé or Simone? That's it, that's the video. Thank you for watching.